He was the inventor of the modern surfboard and small sailboats that could launch from a sandy beach. His name has become synonymous with that subculture of surfers and flip-flops and paddleboarders who want to know what it feels like to glide gracefully and boldly across an ocean surface. Hobie Alter may have passed away on March 29, 2014 from cancer, but his legacy will continue to define a billion dollar industry that he helped to create. We're here with Jeff Alter, Hobie's youngest son and president of Hobie Designs here in San Juan Capistrano. Jeff runs the company Surfboard Manufacturing and Licensing Divisions, and Jeff, thanks for having us here. You're welcome. Thanks for uh, coming and visiting our little showroom here. I love it here, by the way. So for those who may not know your father, Hobie Alter, and I know it's hard to believe he's such an iconic figure in the surf industry, can you give us sort of a thumbnail sketch of who he was and what he accomplished? Um, yeah, I can uh, give it a shot. He was, um, uh, in 1950, he uh, got into surfing and uh, he would come out from uh, Ontario to Laguna Beach and to their uh, beach house. And uh, he just <clears throat> got into surfing, or was actually interested in surfing and decided he, you know, then it, there wasn't a lot of surfboard manufacturers. So uh, he saw a couple of guys that had boards and uh, tried to figure out how to build his own because he mm -hmm. couldn't afford to buy one and they weren't really readily available. And uh, he talked to a guy, Walter Hoffman, got him some balsa wood, sort of taught him what to do and, and built a surfboard. And when he completed the board, somebody wanted to buy it. Wow, the so, first board. The first board. <laughs> so he then, uh, you know, built another one and so on and so on. And it was, it was, uh, uh, it just turned into a surfboard building business in Laguna Beach. Um, he had a shop in his garage, right? The house is still there in Laguna Beach. And um, he built balsa wood surfboards. And that was sort of the start of his brand and his business. And uh, uh, he, you know, went on to uh, get involved with skateboards and they did the Hobie Cat in 1968. He kind of uh, moved on from uh, still doing surfboards, but but you know we did foam and fiberglass surfboards, and then into the Hobie Cat, and now you know basically we do a whole range of water sports products that are kind of a high quality on the water. You know we we built our brand and our lifestyle around sort of fun water products. You know we talked uh, before about your father being this sort of genius manufacturer, this genius engineer, but yet it was sort of intuitive for him to design things, correct? Yeah, he's he's just kind of a be build a better mousetrap kind of guy. I mean, he did a lot of other products that you've never seen, whether it was a golf club or you know stuff that he did for himself or personally. Um, but he 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 could look at anything and want to redesign it. Um, he had a, uh, a lot of the products that, that came about were sort of his desire. He thought it'd be fun and, and it wasn't a big you know, market research to see if it would sell or not. It was more about, I think this would be a good product and all of a sudden people would follow and want to buy the product and that's kind of where, kind of the way we still move forward. We kind of, whether it's SUP or whatever it is, we kind of keep trying to uh, better what's already out there. You know, Hobie, the Hobie brand sort of remains a constant symbol of the surf industry even to this day. What do you feel that says about your father and his contributions to the surf industry? Uh, I think it's amazing. I mean it's it's you know he started back in 1950 and, and uh, was you know very involved in developing the foam and fiberglass that our current boards are made out of today from you know top of the state-of-the-art surfboards are still made the same way that uh, he developed in the uh, late 50s. Um, so you know it's fun, it's exciting, it's it's uh, it's it's a kind of a little niche sport, but um, it's a big sport, but it's still a very creative, handmade, handcrafted sport. And you know the product, most of the products made here in USA and uh, and handcrafted still. So it's it's pretty cool. Hobie was inducted into the National Sailing Hall of Fame in 2011. He was inducted with such individuals as Dennis Connor, who won four America's Cup, and Ted Turner. What was your dad's reaction to being inducted? into the Hall of Fame with these individuals. 
I think he was one of our more proud moments. Um, the sailing world, he, he had a huge contribution to the sailing world, but he did it in more of a, a low-key, small way with little boats, and, and uh, the, the Dennis Connors of the world and the ten, Ted Turners are, are, you know, big money, big boats, big yacht clubby type things, and he kind of did it more down the the regular guy approach. Um, so for him, for them to recognize him and induct him into that, it was pretty, it was really great for him. Your dad was 80 years old when he died of cancer in March of 2014, and there was this huge memorial out at Dana Point. Can you describe a little bit about that experience? Uh, it was, it was pretty incredible. We, um, we had two memorials, one in the Liso Canyon and one in Dana Point, and uh, we didn't really plan it to be any kind of a big public event. We kind of kept it pretty quiet and just let it happen and, and uh, thousands of people showed up and paddled out and people came in boats and kayaks and power boats and you know it wasn't just a surf paddle out um, it was pretty spectacular thousands of people around the world yes yeah people came from all walks of life it was uh, it was uh, and again it was we did it rather quickly we didn't really try to make it a big event because that's not really what we wanted to do but we wanted those that wanted to come to, to have the ability to come and, and they did I think we talked about a story where you came out to Dana Point Harbor on a boat, correct? Yeah, well, we we uh, we took a sister ship called uh, Mantis that is a sister ship of a 60-foot catamaran that my dad built um, that he has, and we took that to spread his ashes off of Laguna. And uh, on the way back, it was pretty spectacular because we got into a pod of dolphins, and it was it was you know they were on all sides of the boat and followed us almost all the way back. And as we came around the corner of Dana Point. Uh, we came across this, the, the paddle out, which was sort of the plan, and, uh, and that kind of just, it was, it was an amazing event. When you saw that, when you saw the reaction and the thousands of people who showed up to pay tribute to your father, what sort of emotional reaction did you have at that moment? You know, it was all pretty emotional, but I just, it, it, to me it was amazing how, how many, uh, how many people he touched and how he went through his whole career. Uh, you know, I, honestly, I don't think he made an enemy and he was a very honorable person. I think that was the biggest, the biggest point for me. We talked about this as well, that when I researched for this interview, I didn't find a negative word out there about your father. And I thought perhaps that was just sort of a PR manufacturing by the company, but in reality, it was just the opposite. He was just a nice guy. You know, my, my sister made a comment, you know, when did someone had asked somewhere in the book or something, when did she know my father was famous? And it was when he, when he, she was young and he did an autograph. Well, this is sort of like, when did you know he was such an honorable person? And it happened kind of at that moment. It was, it was just uh, the outpouring of pe what people said, uh, the letters written. It was, uh, it was pretty evident that he had managed to pull it off and be a good person his whole life. Uh, the book Hobie, Master of Water, Wind, and Waves. Though I know your dad was sort of ill during the writing of this process and the editing of this process, he did get a chance to see the final version, yes? Yes, he did. He was, uh, he was you know, it was great that we were able to get it done and he got a chance to, to review it and yeah. <laughs> he was very critical about it to make sure it was all accurate. Yeah, and so my question is, he was sort of a humble man. What was his reaction to him having an entire book written about his life and his contributions to the surf industry? Um, I, I mean, I, you know, we wanted to do it as a group and we've been talking about it for a long time and uh, there's a lot of different, you know, through conversations the story changes about every other time you talk to somebody. Um, I lived in Hawaii, which we didn't, uh, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it was good to kind of get it all down to, uh, uh, into a book and to have him be able to assist with, with the stories and, and uh, unfortunately we started a little bit late, so he was, he was sick then, so it was a little tough, but uh, it was really important to him that it was as accurate as possible and the good news is, is it's been out for a while now and we haven't really heard anyone too much say that there's any inaccuracies in it. In the end, what sort of legacy do you think your father leaves behind? It's probably the, light, the, the surf lifestyle that we all um, get to enjoy now from the, you know, everyone, the Quicksilvers, the Billabongs, everyone's, there's been a whole lifestyle built and businesses built around surfing and water sports and, and uh, back when he did all that it didn't really exist so I, I guess it's probably the surf lifestyle is probably the, and the amount of, he touched a lot of people around the world by uh, surfing or sailing. When, when he started manufacturing surfboards, there was no industry there, really, right? 
and it just it has become a billion dollar industry. Yeah, it's a it, yeah. There was I mean there was nothing or very little there of anything at all, and um, uh, probably they just thought they were a bunch of crazy surfers, you know. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's become an industry. It's become a lifestyle. You know, we all live it right here in, in our own. You know, from you go to the the beaches and the, it, that whole lifestyle was certainly uh, uh, driven with with a lot of the stuff that he did. Yep, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Scott Hayes and that wraps it up for this edition of OC Caravan. Be sure to look us up online and to like us on Facebook.